HMP Holloway in London is one of the largest women's prisons in Europe. Just a mile down the road, HMP Pentonville, with over a thousand male prisoners. Over a whole year, for the first time on television, the BBC followed offenders inside jail, outside on release, I've drunk three quarters of a bottle of vodka already. And back inside again. Hey, mate. <laughs> Craig is 27. He's already lost years to drugs and prison, but now he wants to change. I'm too 13. I promised myself that I'm not going to be a junkie and coming back to jail. Jade West is just 18, but she's caught in a cycle of petty offending, prison, and self harm. Jade. Crystal Duke is 23 and prefers prison to life outside. The best times I've had have been when I've been in prison. They help me in prison. They don't help me out here. Half of prisoners in British jails re-offend within one year. If someone says, I love prison, doesn't that tell you they're not quite right? How can anybody love prison? Each one has their own story. <laughs> Every morning, the women of Holloway get half an hour's exercise in the yard. Eighteen-year-old Jade West is back in jail for the sixth time on burglary charges. She was taken into care at an early age and has been in institutions all her life. When I come in last night, I was like, yeah, but I've even got my own cell back. <laughs> Jade is a binge drinker with a long history of petty offending. HMP is Her Majesty's Playground. This is her security. This is her extended family. But it'd be terrible that it got into such a pattern that she never comes out of the cycle and gets longer sentences for being a prolific offender. And that's the scary bit for her, I think. Tell her, yeah, tell her to get out of my face, bruv, seriously, man. Jade's Achilles heel is her anger, which has continued to cause problems both outside and inside prison. I'll just say to go like that, get over there. As much as I mean you don't know, puff. Go back, go suck your mum. Did you not just hear me? Get out of my face while I headbutt you, bruv, seriously. You'll get it. <laughs> Today, Jade has been cautioned for failing to leave the exercise yard when told to do so. She is not happy. Why are you banging, Jade? I am. Why? I'm not You're not in the mood for what? Uh, what with that behaviour? What do you think I'm going to do? I'm just going to turn your light on, Jade. Right, I need a word. Because I'm sure you've already heard that I'm aware of your behaviour this morning. Oh, no, you make it out like I did say. No. Mom, Stop swearing for a start. Mom. Listen to me. Miss Nash has put you on report. You're aware of that? OK, she's put me down the seg, then. I'm not putting you down the seg. Yes, but you're one step away from basic. Do you understand that? You're a Jade, you're do you want me to put you on report as well? Put me on report. What was the reason put me on report, then? For refusing to leave the yard. Oh, uh, did I come in? Yes. Did you have to restrain me? No! <laughs> She's now going to be basic. That means she she has half hours association each day. Her visits will be restricted. Uh, she gets to spend less on canteen and she spends most of the day in her room. Jade's behaviour continues to deteriorate. Staff must now monitor her regularly as she has a history of self-harm, including choking herself with ligatures. Craig, Craig has just arrived at Pentonville Prison. He's been here many times before. He smokes crack and heroin and shoplifts to fund his habit. I started coming to prison when I was 21. In that period of time, I've been to prison 13 times. 90% of them are drug-related crimes. I was homeless, yeah. I was doing a lot of badness to fund my drug habit. 
jolting, in it? Back in the system again, man. I'm taking this shit. Craig wants to make this time inside his last. Every time I come jail, I can't believe the view's the same. It doesn't change. That noise. The banging door. The alarm bells. This is what makes it more and more know that this ain't for me, man. I'm like, I ain't gonna break the cycle unless I stop smoking. Once he's settled back into prison, Craig has some respite from his drug habit. He receives a daily dose of the heroin substitute, methadone. Thank you, man. See you later. It's vital that Craig stops using drugs, as over recent years, he's become prone to fits. And he died in this jail 2009, down to my medical problems, which was caused, some of it, because of my drug use. Yeah. Do you understand? Man can't be dying young. I woke up in a coma, yeah? Still in custody. I've never, ever felt so serious about stopping this cycle. I'm 27 now, I'm 213. I promise myself I'm not going to be a junkie and coming back to jail. Four weeks into his sentence, prison medics are called to Craig's cell. Well, it's beyond the door, come on. Come on. Come on. by myself, this has happened, waking up in hospital, I had enough of this man, not coming back to this man, not coming back to this man, and I can start trying to live my life and be Craig again. Back in Holloway, Jade's privileges have been removed. She has become more agitated and is making ligatures from torn curtains, hiding them on her person. No, seriously, f off! You know I'm not gonna go. Well, you still think I'm not gonna tie this around your neck again? No, I think you probably will. Jade, let's put it in perspective. You're, t you're tearing the curtain off the window, tearing into strips of tie around. Well, take that then, take it, think, take a bed. And you think this, I'm gonna leave? That. Do you think that's likely? Oh, do I really look happy that I'm going to be on the boat? Do you think I'm going to yeah. be happy? Are you surprised, Whether it's Jade? now or tomorrow. Are you, no. Are you surprised? You know I'll be back, Jade. Oh, no, again, you think I'm going to let you get off and on? Staff are not allowed to search Jade for ligatures and must make regular checks on her. When Jade comes in, she likes to push the boundaries. It's almost like we're the institution that cares about her and, and she needs to do what she does to get a response. Jade has now tied a ligature around her neck. It is an emergency. only 18 years old. She's been through far more than a lot of other 18 year olds have in their life. I'm nervous because you know before I got out I was actually drinking loads. It's 23 year old Crystal Dukes last night in Holloway after finishing a 12 week sentence for a drug related crime. Crystal battles with drink and is bipolar. She has been coming here since the age of 17. 
the best times I've had have been when I've been in prison. In prison, I feel like I've got structure, routine, loads of decent friends. Like outside, I felt they were more associates. But like as much as I love my family, I feel like I make them proud when I'm in prison, which seems a mad thing to say because I'm clean when I'm in prison. I'm healthy, I'm happy, I'm safe. When I'm outside, I feel like I let them down because of the life I live and the people that I, I roll with and the things that I do. And I just want to make them proud by going out and doing what I'm doing here, out there. Crystal has started a relationship in prison with Tony. Although not condoned by the authorities, these relationships form an important part of life behind bars. I start getting anxiety when I'm due to get out, I start getting panic attacks and that because I know that I'm going back to the same old thing, which is why I keep coming back to jails. I'm safer in here, I've, I've got a bed, I don't have to worry about eating because outside I don't eat. Like, I looked really horrible on my ID card when I came in. You look well now though, don't you? But like... Yeah, like, I'm healthy again now, I am <coughs> dreading getting out, I do cry about getting out a lot. Jade has continued to tie ligatures throughout the day and they are getting tighter. Jade, you know we're going to have to take it off. Let go from me, please. Right, Miss, you can just move your hands, please, so we can, get, we can take it off. Sure Jade, come, come on. Jade! Come on. Jade, we have to After talking with Officer Kelly, Jade calms down and finally stops tying ligatures. They do put up with a hell of a lot of shit from me. Proper loads of shit. It's like when I tied my ligatures, like Miss Kelly was like, why not just press your bell and I'll talk to you? But when I'm in that mood, I don't want to talk to you and I'll drive just do it and then go to sleep. Because once I've done it, it knuckles me out. It's the eve of Crystal's release, and she is preparing for life on the outside. Yeah, it's going to be a big day for me tomorrow. Usually I'd be all excited about gate release, like thinking, I'm going to go and get a beer, I'm going to go and take like, drugs, I'm going to do that. I don't feel like partying tonight, I feel like more nervous and anxious. I've been trying not to cry all day. The thing is, with me and Tony, like, we've, we've both been through, like, so, like, everything the same, and she knows how hard it is, and, like, the last few days, how much cravings have I had, and, like, yeah. I've been craving and I've been getting upset, cos... It's cos I know what I'm going out to. That's what's bothering me. I know that I'm going back to the place that I hate the most. If I could be allowed to go out like once in a while to get my clothes and like get the, go to the shop, I don't think I would ever leave. Would you? Come in. Come in. You've got to tell us any other to keep you company. Oh, I've got. I know it's not the same. I know it's. I don't know what is going to happen on the other side of that wall. I know that I'm walking out healthier and I'm walking out with a plan. I feel sick every time this happens. Do you know what?
what, I've, I've turned around and I've looked at this before many times, but I'm hoping this is the last time I'm going to see this. Uh, especially, well, the way I'm looking at it, I'm hoping that if I ever do see it again, it'll be just driving past rather than getting released. At Pentonville, Craig too could soon be getting out. He served six weeks on remand and is due in court for sentencing tomorrow. I'm not going to lie to you, I'm very, very scared. Mainly because I know that I could be going out there, well, I will be going out there, NFA, no fix the bold, yeah? I've done stuff in the past which obviously is understandable for my mum not to have me there. My dad's very busy and I don't want to put that burden on them of always having to watch me and having to keep an eye on me because I, I, when, you're, when you're on gear, you, you lose kind of any remorse for anyone. When you're clucking, you, you, you're, you, the 90% of people, they'll sell their own mum yeah, for heroin if, you, if, you, if you're hooked on B enough. Yeah? You, you sell your own mum. So yeah, I've stole from my parents and they've heard this. They've heard it over and over again. I'm going to come out, I'm going to do this. Mum keeps saying to me this time, just give me the actions. Yeah, Stop giving me the words and just do actions. Actions are louder than words, my mum keeps telling me. So yeah, I'm very, 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 very scared because I don't know what's going to happen. Fearing homelessness and relapse, Craig turns to the prison drug service for support. You want to sit in that one? Just swap the chairs. Oh, I can sit in. Is that right? Yeah. So you're going to be going to court tomorrow, yeah. Beverly yeah. says? Yeah. Yeah? I'm scared because I don't have certain things in line. Do you understand me? Yeah. So I am very scared, I'm not going to lie. It's not going to sit here and play big man because I am scared because I don't know what's going to happen after tomorrow. And I think, you know, it's right to be scared because obviously you don't want anything to mess this up. You know, and you're going out NFA. You will get, you know, cravings at some time. And them cravings are normally about 20 minutes. When you're kind of, you're craving, that seems like a really long time, but it will pass and with time, it is going to get easier. Not using them no matter what. That's the most important one and that's going to be the one that kind of trials you the most. Craig hopes his dad, who's a drug support worker, will pick him up from court. I don't have no jacket. My jacket's dirty, Dad. I need something clean, yeah? Yeah, of course. My, my head's like yours. Yeah. I spoke to my dad there. He said to me, good luck and that for tomorrow. It's heartbreaking to see your child destroy himself. I felt very desperate at times, you know, wanting him to get better and not you know, wanting to see some kind of change. Um, I followed him on this revolving, revolving door syndrome. He once said to me, and he was at his worst, that he only ever wanted to be like me, <laughs> which, you know, made me feel like shit, really, um, because I'm thinking, well, had I not uh, done some of the things that I'd done, maybe he wouldn't have tried to follow me or be like me. You take drugs. Take drugs, you know, crime, you know, I've been to prison and stuff like that. And, you know, my absences uh, away from Craig and his, and his little sister and his mum probably at some point contributed to some of his emotional distress. At Holloway Prison, Jade's turbulent month behind bars is also coming to an end. Where you got to go to? I've got to go to my nan's first, from where she lives. She will now be under the strict supervision of the police and probation service, a regime which she has failed to adhere to in the past. So you've got to report to your duty officer by 11am. I ain't going to get there for 11. I can ring her though, because I've got a number, because like, there's no chance I'll get there for Well, you. make sure that you make contact with her, because yeah, if you right. just ignore it, then you're being breached straight away, yeah. yeah? And we'll be booking you back in tonight, and we don't want to do that. Right, so try harder to stay out this time. I'm going to run. Just go and stand over on that curb, please. Don't knock. You know the uh, procedure? <laughs> OK, see you again then. Hopefully 
closest person in my family, my nan, like she's been there through everything. She's helped me out a lot, or less, all my life. I've had to fight with a lot with her, but if I didn't, there's nobody else that would uh, have her. So, you know, and be my granddaughter, you do what you've got to do because you love them and, you know, you want them to do the best. You try and put them on the straight and narrow, but ultimately it's down to them. I just hope she can stay out this time. It's always weird going to see her again when I come out. I never know what to say to her when I come back out. Because the first thing she always says, make sure you stay out this time. I'm like, I do try. <laughs> it's not as easy as said than done. When you've been going in and out for like four years, it's hard to stay out. But I suppose I've got to try for her. Otherwise, I keep going back, I'll end up going back to a bloody old woman like half of them. Hello. Hello. Hey, you have Alright. Yeah. How was she doing inside? Alright, self armed a bit. Why? Just stressing it. But it's been alright. What did I say to you? Yeah. Either try and ring me or just go to one of the prison officers and tell them how you feel. Yeah, but you yeah. know I don't do I know that. you don't like doing it, but you've got to try and learn to do it, Jade, haven't you? Mm. Yeah? Because you know how I feel about it. Yeah. Yeah? Because no one else is going to worry about you, are they? No. Hey. So it's just me having all this on my shoulders. <laughs> Dry my sorrows. <laughs> Jade lives alone in a council flat with her dog, Buster. She is estranged from her mum, who has herself been in and out of prison all her life. Like my mum didn't really see me grow up, apart from like the odd time when she was at prison in like a visiting centre and all that bollocks. When I have kids, I can guarantee you I will not be going to prison. Or if I do, they'll be coming up to visit me like every weekend, do you know what I mean? I'd never put my kids through that. I'm not going to lie, Holloway, I do love prison. And I do miss it, but sometimes you've got to try and move on to get better in life. But it is going to be hard. I want to stay out this time. I stay out for this little bastard. You're my little puppy. You're my puppy. <laughs> Crystal has been out of Holloway and drug-free for two weeks. She's back in her hometown of South End. Going to prison all started from hanging about down here, fighting, drinking, and just being little terrorways. I live on an estate that's known for all the wrong reasons, really. It's like a sweet shop. What you want, you can get there. If you've got a person like me with addiction problems, it's like throwing someone in a pond who can't swim. They're going to sink. So, yeah, I am... I'm quite nervous about moving in here full-time cos um, it wasn't somewhere that I enjoyed living. Living here every day, I pretty much used to get up I used to look out this window, I'd spot whoever I wanted to buy from, and I'd call them and then I'd, they'd just buzz my buzzer and they'd come up. It was pretty much like a taxi service, really. I'm very anxious about coming back here. I am, but I'm hoping that with my girlfriend due to come out, we'll, we'll, we'll have nice memories of me and her, we'll build memories in this flat of us, so they'll sort of overtake the bad ones that I've had. But I am worried about relapsing. I'm worried about having a bad day, looking out the front, seeing everyone out there not, and me thinking, oh, it could be so easy, I could do that. Crystal will have to wait two months before girlfriend Tony is released from Holloway and can join her. 
At Pentonville, Craig is on his way out. He's going to court for sentencing. Later that day, he's freed. It's 5 p.m. just before a bank holiday weekend. His sudden release means he has no drug support or housing in place, but at least his dad has agreed to put him up. Yeah, well, now is your time. This time is your chance to get it right. You know what I mean? You can't go down that same road again, right? You've been there too many times, right? And you know what the deal is now. You understand? You You're just asking for trouble if you keep going back, Craig. Craig needs a methadone prescription today, or he'll soon be suffering withdrawal, which may cause him to go back to drugs. Now, we're going to have a problem getting this script because I don't know if we're going to catch her at the surgery in time. His doctor's surgery, who have been trying to treat Craig's addiction for years, make him an emergency appointment. Hey, Craig. Right now? Mm. Honest truth? Yeah. A little bit. Is there anything that we can do to help you? I'm just going to try to stay on my family and just try and do this different this time. You've seen me sit down here and cry to you, innit? I want to stay just one of the only people I could really talk to. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Do you understand? Yeah. So you see me at my all-time lows, and from maybe now you see me now, how do you, how do you, how do you, how you perceive me? Well, as always, when you come out of prison, you always look healthier than when you went in. Positive. For real. Because you're eating and whatever. My honest opinion... Wait and see. I'm not so sure how much you want to be clean. That's honest. I'm looking at your face, I'm looking at your expressions. Mm -hmm. That's the honest truth. I'm getting put on the spot right now, so... Well, what can... Well, I mean, you asked me a question. I ain't going to lie to you. I've never have. You're saying that you want to get clean. You haven't really said that before, in fairness. But I'm hearing the words, but I'm looking at your face. and you said it to me the, the messages aren't quite equating. But, as always, I always say to you, prove me wrong, I'd love it. The next stop is a visit to Craig's mum. You look well. Yeah. You, you look well, you look like my child. As always. It's sad because he comes out and he's got a lot of hope and then gradually he sort of loses his way again. He gives up because there's nothing for him to lean on. And at the same time I worry because all mums, all parents, you want your children to be able to cope and to make their way in life because you know one day you're not going to be there and what happens when you're not there. And that's really my concerns. I'm glad to see him. I'm glad to see him look like my son because he doesn't always look like this. And I just like to live long enough to see that your life does change. Jade is back in jail again. Two weeks, Sarah. It's my fault. You've missed me, don't lie. <laughs> yeah, like old years. Everyone needs to do. She was out for just a fortnight before breaching her license. Everyone said to me, don't come back. And I was trying not to, but it's not easier said than done. Like, I've been to like most of my probation and I missed a couple. Like, I was meant to be there at 10 o'clock yesterday. I turned up at, like, 5. <laughs> I can't be bothered with it. Despite being happy to return to Holloway, it doesn't take long for things to go wrong. Jade has been told that this time she may face a long sentence. Fuck the jacket!
The only way she knows how to express herself is through anger. Another week in Holloway, and Jade's behaviour is again causing concern. She has started tying ligatures. Hello, Jade, from Delta A Coco on um, H1, you know, Jade begins to think about the consequences of her actions. I see me just let myself down, as well as Miss Kelly and the governor. And all the other officers like Miss Rosman give up. But I won't wish it on anyone like for officers to find someone dead in this house. Back on the outside, Crystal had been drug-free for two months, but has recently relapsed. She has secured a place in rehab and has decided to give up her flat and return to the family home. I've been so down lately and so like, emotional and upset. I thought, because I was doing everything right, that the drug situation would just go out the window, like that I wouldn't think about it anymore. And then I started getting like massive cravings. I really do need the rehab, do you know what I mean? And I really don't want to be a 40-year-old heroin and crack addict on the front line, so I want to sort this out now. To whom it may concern, due to 12 months of constant issues such as addiction, mental health problems, domestic violence and the fact my property is far from suitable for my complex needs, I am no way fit enough to carry on living at this address. I'm doing everything in my power to get me into treatment where they can help me recover. I know this makes me homeless, but I cannot cope with living in this accommodation. It is no means appropriate for me being in a vulnerable stage of my life. I learned to read and write in Holloway. I have achieved a lot in prison. I've done victim awareness. This one here is recognition of attendance at Carrots Crack Awareness Program. I've done a certificate that I tested negative for benzos, amphetamine, cannabis, cocaine and morphine. I've been awarded there for adult numeracy entry level two and adult numeracy, numeracy entry level three. Everything I've ever achieved has been in prison or while on an order. It's usually once that that's finished that I struggle. These are the ones that Tony has sent out to me since I've been out. The loved one, 
that are from me to you, thinking of you always, and I love you. I know it sounds a bit soppy, but I look at that every night and like, I think, oh, I love you, you'll be out soon. After a fortnight back home, Crystal is planning to leave for rehab, 250 miles away up north. I feel like it's all worthwhile, everything I've done. Everyone feels that I'm going to get there. Everyone's saying to me, I really think you're going to complete it. So I, I'm really like, I can't wait. Come on, let's go and get Lily's presents open. As long as I take everything that's on offer to me and I work at this seriously, things are only going to be good. Go kiss. Mwah. Love you. I love them to bits. I ain't got my own, so like, I like to be the like, best auntie you can be, innit, for them. Especially now they're getting older, I don't want them to like embarrass them, do you know what I mean? I don't want them to think, oh, that's my auntie, the one who's like, on, do you know what I mean, them sort of things. I want them to be like, oh, yeah, that's my auntie, like... Ah. Mm. You're going to be a good boy. Do you Yeah? Do you like it? I really lost my nerve this morning. I woke up and thought, I don't know whether I'm going to go. I was like, like, that's how I felt this morning. Like, if I knew I was going to prison this morning, I would not be nervous in any way, because I know what to expect. No. I know she's got to do it, but blimey, no, I didn't no. think this would happen. It's really mixed feelings. Yeah, it's sad. You'll be all right, Mum. But, Come here. you know, we'll be all right. She's been a good girl and all she has. She's really tried for this, honestly. She's really tried. But I just hope, you know, that right. uh, she gets what she wants in life from it. I'm sure she will. But I didn't think it'd be like this, because I'm a bit of an hard nut to crack, but I don't know. There's no words that can explain this one. It's like... You go... Well, it's like you're going in the army, you know what I mean? Or you're going somewhere, you've got to go. But you haven't got to go, because it's her choice. There's people sitting there now in crack houses and smack houses, like, who, who, who do want to go to rehab, and I've got the chance to go. So if I don't go, I'm an idiot. Right, so are you going to let them go with me? Let the balloon go? Let it go. That's it. Whoa! Look at them. In two months' time, Crystal hopes to return to South End completely drug free to start a new life with girlfriend Tony. For Craig, the pull of crack and heroin has proved too great. He stayed with his dad only a few days, then left for the streets. We tracked him down, begging for money to buy drugs and sleeping in a squat just a mile away from his mother's home. This is the penthouse right now where we are. It's a bit messy right now still. But, uh, I don't know what's that bad messy in it. messy pins and crap pipes and a mess everywhere. So it goes in it. Part of the lifestyle, I guess. While I'm at this, nothing never gets done. Just run around like headless chicken, making money, smoking, making money, smoking. I can't even go out there and save him. I could go out, pick him up, bring him home, fix him up, give him a bed to sleep for the night, but tomorrow I'll be back out there doing the same thing. My biggest fear is getting a phone call and having to go and identify him somewhere. Back in Holloway, staff have adopted a new approach to dealing with Jade. Every time she's locked behind her door, the ligatures are getting more and more frequent, the staff are getting more anxious about everything that's going on. So what we're going to try and do now is try and keep her occupied, trying to give her different things to do so that she basically wears herself out. Normally I'm awake till like 12, 1 o'clock. But when I'm cleaning, it's wearing me out, so I'm going to sleep early and then I'm getting up in a bit of So I ain't going to sell farm and all that bullshit. It's too positive about everything. Because I want to get out of this hospital. But Miss Kelly, like I said, I've got a lot of positive comments. All the staff are 
seeing that I'm making progress and not going back to how I used to be, the little sheep. <laughs> Especially Miss Kelly, Miss Kelly. I don't know how she still writes, to be like. The amount of times I've been that horrible for all the officers, really. Like, the amount of times I've mashed off at them, gone to spit them or whatever. And they still come back and talk to me and all that. Miss Kelly, it's done. Do you need a rest? No, what? <laughs> missed a bit. Don't even go there, Carl. I'll try my best to hold that graffiti. What? Got ya. Oh, you're a demon. <laughs> you're treading on all my clean floor. Oh, I'm sorry. A week on and having been in Holloway just 12 days, Jade gets bail and is released on licence again. The conditions of your bail are as follows, yeah? After to observe a curfew each day between the hours of 20, 100 and 7 o'clock, yeah? Going home! To report to Grey's Inn Police Station Monday to Friday between 12 noon and 2 o'clock. <laughs> I'm sorry, mate. That's alright, apology accepted. But it only means... Oh, you fucking made me cry, man! Listen, listen, oh. it only means something if you intend not to do it again. Oh, oh. I'll probably be back when I get sentenced. Right, Jade, you give that. Yeah, I'll there. there. Do not turn this on until you're past the second yeah. gate. Yeah, wish. Yeah. Be good. Bye, miss. Bye-bye. It ain't opening, but they don't let me go. I'm going to do it, like, month by month, really. See you later. Yeah. Craig has somehow survived four months out on the streets. Yeah, I am now. What's been happening? Tell me what ain't been happening, boy. Tell me what ain't been happening. Fucking, still fucking, producing, still fucking, smoking. Where have you been staying? Fucking right here where we are right now. So me? After just 10 days in rehab, Crystal discharged herself to be with girlfriend Tony, now out of prison. Crystal was too embarrassed to return to her mum's. We found her with Tony on the streets of London in a desperate state. I went to rehab and I started deteriorating massively, losing loads of weight, uh, loads of emotional like mood swings, and I'm telling them that I'm really depressed and I'm upset and no one is listening to me. They're telling me, just go in your room and lie down. Then I just dis discharged myself and went straight to hers. Yeah. But obviously, I've, obviously, I've been in a right bad way and that drinking since and everything. So this is a new thing for me. This has done my head a bit, like, massively, to tell you the truth. Just like, I'm, I don't know, it's just dangerous out here. Like, we're in the worst place we could be. If I weren't really into Tony and I thought that she was, like, well, I, I, I don't know, I'd go and get, go back to prison. She's got a structure, you're safe, you don't have to worry about where you're yeah. sleeping, you don't have to worry about where you're eating. I, I, like, I love it in jail, I, miss, I actually miss jail. Do you know that? I actually yeah. really do miss jail. Really I really do, though. This is like, I'm look, looking around, I'm, I'm sitting on a floor, like, dirty floor. I'm better off in jail. This is why I go back to jail. It's, it's like I'm walking over London Bridge thinking I'm just going to dive in the water. 
seriously it's like that's how it's got because i just don't think that it is gonna <laughs> nothing get nothing gets any better does it two days after filming with crystal she called us to say she had taken an overdose we notified the police who found her and she was rushed to st thomas's hospital I got a call on Saturday morning at half ten. Deborah, are you seated from the police? I said, why, what's the problem? They said, your daughter took an overdose and she was semi-unconscious and we've had to rush her to St Thomas's Hospital. So I got in touch with my mother-in-law, well, my dear friend, who said, don't worry, I'll come with you to the hospital. So she's been by my side. Crystal was on a life support machine in the intensive care unit. She's stable at the moment, but they can't take the tube out and take her out of intensive care because um, she's, her breathing's not right. The system never pick up things. Now I've asked them, I've said, listen, what is the situation this time? He said, this is the worst one ever. She could have died. I, thank God someone found her. Kelly, how are you? I hope you're OK. I want you to know that I am actually really missing you quite a lot, as you are the person I am most close to. Also, I just want to say I am very grateful for all your help and support that you have given me. Even when I wouldn't talk to you and push you away, you still came back, and I'm sorry for all the shit I've done. I really miss our chats, and when I felt shit or self-harmed, you did always cheer me up. I have been doing all right, I suppose, and I've still got my dog, Buster. Tell Mrs Rosemond and Gibbo and Sue that I said hello and I'll write again soon. I miss you and love you loads. Lots of love, Jade West, a.k.a. Trouble. That's right. Miss you, Blondie. <laughs> That's nice. It's nice for her to let me know how she is because we do care and I do worry about Jade when she's not in prison. <laughs> Jade is drinking heavily and failing to keep to the regime imposed upon her by the courts. I need a break from that age, you know what I mean? Everything's just too on top of me at the minute. Bada bing, bada boom. I've drunk. Three quarters of a bottle of vodka already. Bada bing, bada boom. Jade is required to make daily visits to her probation officer, who knows her behaviour well. I've spoken to you loads of times about this drinking. Don't look at me like that. You can't blame me, right? I've cut down from a litre to just half a fucking litre. Which is better than nothing. I could come here and like, not even be able to walk straight. I think I remember one occasion when you could barely stand up. When that's because I didn't team. drink for two weeks. That's why I'm going to an ACE But that's the whole point. Out. The binge drinking is far worse than just having a couple yeah, every it's day. It's not binge drinking, though, is it? Right, I'm going to make a call. Go on, then make a call. Cut down half a fucking litre. Hello. It's Jane calling from Grace Probation. I've got one of my PPOs. Um, she's got alcohol issues. Wow. <laughs> Do you know what? You just... Sit up now, Jay, because I'm really no, getting cross because you cut. No, I don't care. You're mugging off and doing it on fucking purpose. And I didn't. So why are you fucking mugging I'm not saying you did it on purpose. Well, yeah, I can't even be bothered with your shit, but I'm just going to go in a minute because I can't be asked for you. What do you come in here to say to me? Fuck all. It's not the first time she behaved like that. She just has this fear that normal rules don't affect me. And I think that's a lot to do with not having had uh, rules and boundaries from a young age. Um, 
and her behaviour is very much like, like a, a child. I am concerned. She actually seems to be getting worse. Her behaviour seems to be getting worse. Oh, I've already been told this is my last warning. If I have one more breach, then I'm going to go back to prison like her. I've already been told that, but I don't give a shit. I never fucking do. It's my life. If I want to spend most of my life in prison, I will. And no one's going to stop me. After several days, Crystal came off the life support machine. She was sent to a secure unit where she finally got the treatment she needed for her bipolar condition and drug issues. A few weeks later, we went to see her mum. So far, so good. She's doing better than she was. And she's taking the medication, but she's sectioned. It's a bit like a prison order, really, because when you're in prison, you, you've got to be there. When you're in hospital, you've got to be there if they put an order on you. So it's a kind of an order where if she comes out and they give her an appointment for the Friday, a, a check-up to see how she's getting on, she's got to go to that. If she doesn't, she goes back to hospital, which is really what Crystal needs. But how bad is it when you've got to lose your life nearly to get some help? While we were there, Crystal's mum received a phone call. Don't be stupid, Crystal. What's wrong with you? Don't be stupid. No, I'm coming back up to the hospital now, so stay where you are, for God's sake. Don't they love all the police out and everything. Don't be stupid. But they'll come out looking for you, Crystal. Oh, for God. Look, wait where you are, for God's sake, do. You'll lose everything. Don't be stupid, Crystal. She's gone. Done a runner. Come in here. Oh, my Lord. I'm just hoping and praying to God that she comes home. Because the way Crystal looks and the way she is at the moment, I'm just hoping to God she don't go out, meet someone and go and take something. That's all I hope to God. Because I cannot believe this. Here she is. Here she is. Oh, my God. Thank God for that, though. Oh, you're silly, though. Fuck you're him. Silly. Fuck him. Fuck him. Fuck him. Oh, this is sad, this is, though. This is sad. <laughs> this is probably going to be here all my stuff. Enough. Is in the place. I'm supposed to be back at quarter two. I don't know what you're going to do. You're going right. to go to Hadley. In a minute, we're going to have to get in a. a get, we've got to get to a nearest cash machine. We've drawn the money, everything out of the account because they'll trace the, the money to the account. Yeah. Because probably I won't be filmed down for ages, Lou, because I'm going to be locked up. I'm going to hold a shop up so I can go back to prison. Yeah, because I can't handle being where I'm at. You can't do no such thing. You're not. Oh, I am. I oh, no, you're me. not. You're not going back there, but there's no way you're going back to prison. Why do you feel you're better in prison? Because in prison, they help me. They help me in prison. They don't help me out here. All they want to do is lock you up, lock you up, yeah? At least in prison, you're locked up for a reason. I'm worried about my mother. That's what I'm worried about. My mum, who's got abscesses and a bad leg. I don't care what I do, but I don't want to see them lock you up, but you're, you're on an order now and I can't do nothing about it. Well, what do you, you think I feel like? That, will you? you can't go against it now because they're in charge and you have got to work with them. You've got to go back to hospital. And they don't give a shit about... For the next ten minutes, her mum tried to persuade Crystal to go back to hospital. Stay in the hospital until they say different. At least in prison, you're locked up for a reason. Eventually, her mum won the argument. After six months on the streets, Craig finally ended up back in Pentonville. He was charged with common assault after a scuffle in a supermarket. Back in the Ross Clark jail house again, boy. Boy, I pray this is the last time. 
I doubt it ever will be, but I pray it will be the last time. I remember the days I said, laugh and say, yeah, guess what? I've never been in Christmas jail for Christmas and never been in birthday. I always get out, always get out. Not this time, innit? Craig did spend his 28th birthday inside. Happy birthday. But his mum was there with him. My first born. All right. Hey, listen, I want Twixes, yeah? Twixes. And, and cake, yeah? Craig had another chance to rebuild his life with the support of his family. <laughs> Give a family hug now, isn't it? A proper family hug, innit? Oh, yeah? You lot are some nerds. <laughs> A few weeks later, he was due for release once again. In Southend, Crystal's mum is preparing for Christmas. She has received news from Crystal, who has been in a secure unit for the last six months. To my mum, thank you so much for standing by me when I gave up on life. I'm so sorry for all the stress I have caused you. But mum, thank you most of all for your visits. I have done my programmes and I have tried my best. I will make you proud. I miss you loads. You're my mum. Love you always. Crystal. I do I am gonna miss her at the Christmas dinner table and as I wrap each present I cry. That's normal. But next year, the way she's going, next year she'll be out and I think she'll really turn her life right round because she's done so well. I've been up on a visit to see Crystal and I can honestly say I've never seen her look so well. Every conversation with her is positive. But I mustn't do any more crying, I've been told. No more crying, just think positive. She will be out after Christmas, so, you know, we've just got to get over this, this 2012, really. That's what we've got to do. <laughs> Holloway is no place for no girl. If someone says, oh, I love prison, doesn't that tell you they're not quite right? How can anybody love prison? Hey, mate. I just fucking got drunk and didn't get home from my tag. And then smashed someone in the face. And then got nicked just there for another breach of my tag for taking the dog out. <laughs> Everything was just doing my head in, man. It would be like the littlest thing that pissed me off. Fuck the screws! That's what we all fucking say. That really pissed me off now. Jade is back in Holloway for the third time in four months. She's back. I wasn't surprised. You decent? Oh, I'm naked, don't come in. Can't wait to see Miss Kelly tomorrow either, as I know when she is on it. If I have a problem, I can talk to her. It is like a kick in the stomach sometimes because Jade, we always get Jade to a point where we think she's going to be successful outside and she might achieve something. So it is disappointing when she comes back. And it's very sad for us to, to think that Jade thinks of this place as home now. Like, basically, I'll just take the easy way out. Instead of dealing with my problems and all that shit, I'll go, I'll just come here and they go, more or less. Or I just talk to an officer about them, um, it's easier. <laughs>